Balacera. Otro lío de pandillas que en el diario aparecerá. La vida se desaparece como el humo de un cigarro. Un loco disparando desde un carro. Otra vida que se pierde bajo el cielo gris. No se puede ser feliz cuando gente muere en un desliz. Como Marco que soñaba con ser narco. Viajar en barco y olvidarse de las penas en su cuarto. Pero cada vez que parcha ya se siente harto. Y su corazón marquito marcha para el infarto. Almas en oferta como Berta. Como Berta. Una cama, pero en otra se despierta. Sí. Son 14 años y ya perdió la niñez. Se desaparece un viernes y no regresa en dos o tres. Coleccionando amores, sin importancia los rumores. Sí. Malos menores, sin temores y sin valores. Miedo. Deambulando en cada sitio, en cada sitio. Con el futuro a convertirse en un graffiti. Sí. Pase lo que pase hoy. Siempre con la mente tu recuerdo en mi corazón te llevaré. Para donde quiera que yo voy. Pienso diferente, es que el amor yo está presente. Pase lo que pase hoy, siempre con la mente tu recuerdo en mi corazón te llevaré. Para donde quiera que yo voy, pienso diferente, es que el amor yo está presente.
Shalom, shalom, shalom fam, shalom. Mr. Brother Emmanuel once again. Um, I'm gonna, uh, well, first of all, peace and blessings to all of y'all. Paz y bendiciones para todos mis hermanos. Uh, as you know, this is uh, Bible Chronicles strictly about our people here, you so-called Hispanics, so-called Native Indians, right? Why well, make sure that you guys understand that we're the Hebrews of the Bible, okay? Now, the reason I also bring up particular songs is because I want to show you guys, I don't just play things just to play things. I have a message. Our people are struggling and they speak what they say through music or any way they can. Now, I want to clear this up. I've never done videos on YouTube before this year, okay? So I've learned a little bit now here and there, made my mistakes. I'm still learning as always in anything. What I find very interesting is this. As I make um, regarding subscribers and unsubscribed people, right? Um, when I make videos, I notice that as most videos come out, uh, subscribers increase or even decrease. So it seems almost as if sometimes it depends on the, the class that I do where <laughs> the subscribers increase or decrease. So I'm going to make this very clear to all of you. If you're here for entertainment, this is not for you. If you're emotional, Bible Chronicles is not for you. I don't do super chats. I don't care about money. I'm not interested in, 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 in uh, trimming my waist to seek love. I'm not here for any partiality. No, not at all. I'm going to speak the truth whether I even like to read it or not. You guys don't think that this research is somewhat fearful when I started researching about if I was a Hebrew? Because what if I found out through research that it, I wasn't, which is what we're finding now with other so-called nationalities. So, again, I'm not here for entertainment. You might as well unsubscribe right now because I'm here to live a certain life, a Hebrew life, a life of commandments, of statues. I'm here to help my brothers and sisters wake up their spirit because I do get to see some of them yearn for some wisdom and knowledge and i have a lot we have a lot of nonsense out here right now you so-called hispanics i'm gonna tell y'all right now i'm not dude this is so sad i i hate to even bring it up man i honestly i, I know for a fact that you guys uh, are very familiar with silly dove right and you know that with these one with camps they basically say that so-called northern kingdom okay so-called is this right here ephraim hosea 7 11 it says ephraim also is like a silly dove without a mind they call to egypt they go to assyria so i'm not gonna lie to you guys this is very painful there's a lot of silly doves that are so-called hispanics because they believe in every doctrine that's to and fro, sincerely, you know, and quite frankly, the scriptures tell you what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to hold on to that crown. Because once you start bugging out, guess what, man? Christ is not in you, especially when you're it's not even when you're walking back and forth that towing that line, whether I don't know if the new commandment is real or not. Now we see people. With a some kind of root doctrine, which I'm going to talk about today, to make sure that we clear the air and and and, and clarify this nonsense and this sincerely stupidity, because you know this Hebrew stuff has been around for some time, right? And we've been us Hispanics have been able to see at least the ones that have been woken, see who we are. Now, whether it was through, you know, some awkwardness of us finding the, the truth, the Most High has his ways. We cannot figure him out. But you got to stick. You got to stick to what your faith is at that moment, no matter who tries to move you. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, it says, When I was a child, a child is very easily manipulated, very emotional, and sometimes... Not so quick to move on, but then all of a sudden, snaps. When I was a child, I spake as a child, meaning I thought as a child. I processed information as a child. 
meaning I took one foreman and I judged everything off that particular page. I spake as a child, right? A child does not really do what this does. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. I'm sorry. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. So that means that you process information a little bit slower, maybe. Or you just simply don't process the right information that everybody that is an adult, like here. But when I became a man, I put away childish things, meaning what? I don't speak like a child. I don't act like a child. I don't think like a child. I don't process information like a child. I don't fall for anything that somebody tells me. I dig it. I dig into it. I exercise my brain, my manly brain, to find out if what I'm being taught is a legitimate, legitimate, quote unquote, doctrine. So now, as brethren, I'm going to tell you, all of you guys right now, if you guys say you believe in the Bible, then for God's sakes, man, keep the basic laws in effect. Leviticus 19, uh, 7 I 2 1, even within your group that you guys have. Matthew 18, clear things up in the air, man. And don't make it national. And listen, to you, to you Hebrews that are teaching the Bible, stop doing super chats. Why are you guys asking for money? It's almost like as if you're just bringing out, you know, channels so then you can get paid. Sonetter, uh, Vocab, uh, Sakari, uh, who, I don't know who else does that. I don't think GMS does that, honestly, so I can't say that. Uh, IUIC, they're very, very, they don't do it, but guess what, guys? <laughs> Every month, if you're, if you're, if you got a quote unquote rank purple shirt, you got to give alms. Or else they take your shirt because that's what I was told. Unless they lied to me. Well, it is what it is. Leviticus 19 17, and it reads, okay? Again, let's figure this out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Meaning what? If I allow my brethren to, to go into some weird walk or some weird doctrine, guess what? I means I hate my brother. Now, I may be upset about certain things, but I don't hate my brethren, okay? I want to make that very clear. I may, not dis I may not agree with you. I may not like the way you move, but I don't hate my brethren, okay? I disagree and maybe strongly, but I don't hate. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, meaning I got to correct you. Every brother in here needs to correct your brother. If you see that somebody is kind of wavering off, you got to try to bring that person back. And not suffer sin upon him, because once they believed, and then now it's kind of bugging out. Thou should not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the child of thy people. And I sincerely do my best to apply that. Because I've worked on getting rid of bitterness, which is what a lot of you brethren have. Which is why you, you can apply the basic laws. You can't do Matthew 18 and not be emotional. Because all of a sudden, the moment you may get on the phone or get face to face, your blood boils. And next thing you know, you don't know how to what? How to discipline your spirit. Anyhow, let's watch this class here real quick. Oh, oh by the way, let me read this. I don't want to forget. You too. I want to make sure that you guys know. I do not make any profit whatsoever. And as a matter of fact, I laugh at people that do that. I, don't, I, I think it's such a joke. You guys are out here teaching the Bible, and next thing you know, guess what? You're getting paid for it. That's just, oh, my God. Anyhow, um, oh, and by the way, I'll do, I'm going to do a class regarding alms and how alms are supposed to function in our society today, not how they're teaching us, because we have a system where we can actually apply the laws regarding alms. I'm telling you, that class is coming up, okay? Let me read this. Copyright disclaimer says this content. Does not belong to Bible Chronicles. Excuse me, guys. Let me drink some water. Excuse me. Excuse me. This content does not belong to Bible Chronicles, nor does Bible Chronicles claim this intellectual property. The content provided today has and always will belong to the content owner. Bible Chronicles does not have any affiliation with the owner of this property. As mentioned, Bible Chronicles does not intend to make use of any material for the purpose of harvesting gain. However, under Title 17 of United States Copyright Law, States material in use can only be done when it's for theological or general educational purposes, and thus Bible Chronicles believe that this principal material falls under fair use, which honors protection under Section 107 of the same U.S. copyright law, which includes the music that I'm also playing, because it's a music that it's educating, right? It lets our people know what's going on in their struggles. 
So I don't take any credit for it, nor will I make any profit whatsoever. In any material I use, I want to make sure that you, YouTube, understands that, okay? Now, let me continue. Uh, okay, so let's watch this video here real quick. Again, I appreciate who this is. Um, because it's very informative and at least gets us Shalom, to, bien 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 to the class to show you what's going on here. It's time that we find out what, what, what what's this deal with what, what's going on with all this, right? Okay, let's find out. Y'all don't know. Here, excuse me. Think, think of, of rum guzzling. When you, when you think, think of pirates, you probably, probably think of rum guzzling, treasure, treasure hunting, hunting eye patch wearing, yar swearing, bad, bad boys of the high seas. seas. But did, did you know, know that centuries before Johnny Depp suited up as Jack Sparrow, Sparrow there were Jews who operated under the swaying John Roger? Roger. Who were these Jewish, Jewish pirates, pirates of the Caribbean? Of the Caribbean? What, what motivated them? them? And what, what kind of, of semi-kosher mayhem, mayhem did they get into? into? It all started in 1492, when King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain expelled 200,000 Jews. This purge of the Jews came from a Christian clerk who wanted to stop traditional Jews from influencing conversos, Jews who had converted to Christianity. Oddly enough, the clerk himself had converso ancestors. But we guess that didn't stop them. A number of these exiled Spanish Jews decided to seek revenge from their anti-Semitic monarchs on the high seas. These long-bearded, sword-wielding, Spanish-speaking members of the tribe were like something out of an overblown Tarantino vengeance fantasy. There was even a pirate nicknamed the Great Jew. By the way, I want, I'm showing this. Not all of it is true. So, guys, discern, okay? Discern. His actual name was Sinan Reyes, and he was second in command to the pirate Barbarossa, Italian for Redbeard, in the early 1500s. The duo attacked their fair share of Spanish merchant ships. But it, but it wasn't, wasn't all fun and games, games and bottles of kosher rum. rum. In, the In the early 1540s, the great Jew's son, son was kidnapped at sea by King, King Charles V of Spain, and Redbeard recaptured, recaptured the kidnapped boy in an, an epic, epic series of attacks, attacks that included sacking, sacking a small Spanish town and blowing up the fort. Another, Another Jewish pirate was Moses Cohen Henriquez, considered, considered to be one of the most successful buccaneers ever. ever. He was, he was supposedly, supposedly the brains behind one of the biggest pirate hauls in history, the 1628 capture of the Spanish Silver Fleet, a convoy of about 25 ships loaded with treasure returning from Spain's American colonies. Loaded with slaves, too. Henrique sailed with the Dutch West India Company Admiral and low-key pirate Pete Payne, whose anti-Spanish agenda was inspired by his time as a slave on a Spanish ship. The silver and gold the duo lifted in the raid is estimated to be worth over $1 billion today. Not bad for a day's haul. Henrique was a pretty wild guy, too. He established his own pirate island, where he slept and hid his fortune, continued to advise Hain, and sailed the seven seas, eluding capture for the rest of his days. Other Jewish pirates were less tethered to the bad boy life. Yaakov Curio, a.k.a. Diego Perez de Costa, was a conversal Jew who commanded three pirate ships in the Caribbean seas and spent a good decade or so pillaging unsuspecting Spanish vessels. And then, he found God. He repented for his marauding ways, became the first ever Baal Teshuvah pirate. Eventually, he made his way to the land of Israel, where he settled in Safed, a city in Galilee, after becoming enthralled with the mystical teachings of Rabbi Isaac Luria, or the Arizal, the father of contemporary Kabbalah. Then there was the man known as the Pirate Rabbi, who terrorized the seafaring Spanish in the late 1500s, using part of his loot to found a community of Sephardic Jews in Amsterdam. The pirate rabbi supposedly kept kosher on the high seas, and may have even brought a chef along with him to make sure he wasn't eating trafe. Jewish pirates tended to form partnerships with leading non-Jewish pirates of the day. This often led to remarkable crossovers of Jewish and pirate culture, including treasure maps written in Hebrew, ships with names like the Queen Esther and the Shield of Abraham, and tombstones in Jamaican Jewish cemeteries that bore the skull and crossbones. These seabound raiders fought for decades against the Spanish, attacking ships and sharing Spanish naval secrets with Spain's enemies, all while building up a mercantile network connecting trading posts or Connecting trading posts that transported slaves? Let's continue. Around the globe. Some scholars shy away from using the term Jewish pirates, since a lot of the aforementioned people serve in advisory roles to other leading pirates. But if we brought in the term to include buccaneers, smugglers, privateers, or, or in Spanish, contrabandistas, there's a broad consensus that Jews at the time were involved in illegal trade and raid against the Spanish Empire. Maybe what we actually call them is not as important as just recognizing that they existed at all. 
and recognizing that the Jewish role in early mid-second millennia of Caribbean maritime history was greater than we thought. These Jewish naval greats had profound influence on leading pirates at the time, and took their fate into their own hands by shooting back at the empire that tried to stomp them out. And many succeeded, which makes for some pretty thrilling stories of vengeance and self-determination, and highlights these pirates as colorful examples of... Hey, listen, guys, by the way, through all this enthusiasm of this, this heathen here, that possible heathen, I think he is, uh... His enthusiasm of like how, yes, and the Jews, and you see boats and ships, and we know what happened with boats and ships. So, by the way, uh, if you are a so-called Jew, if you call yourself a Jewish person or a Sephardic Jew, guess what? You fall under Mohammedis, and this man right here, which is Lunari, Lunira or Luniria, who... Basically, it was like an offshoot of the um, Talmud, which became the Kabbalah. So, uh, Sephardic Jews studied the Talmud and, and took, took their, their fate into their, their own hands. hands and the Kabbalah. Okay? So, if you're calling yourself a Sephardic Jew, that means that you have to be in the Talmud and Kabbalah to consider yourself that. And that means also that if you consider yourself that, then you are not a Hebrew. Because they're not Hebrews. And we're going to prove that today. Let's go to uh, Sirach, chapter 3. I was told this once, and you know, I never have a problem with this. Because I tend to approach things as if I'm a child. So I can really grasp what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to learn. So I always go out of my way to apply all my senses, but it seems like people don't. Sirach chapter 3 verse 21 says, Seek not out things that are too hard for thee. Listen, the Most High gave us all gifts. He gave us all abilities. Some of us are great teachers. Some of us are great research. Some of us are great readers. Some of us, um, I don't know, in this truth, I don't know, you're out there, you're motivated, you tend to bring people together. It's like Some of us just have that spirit. So you got to know what your what your spirit is and what your job is in this in this like what your assignment is in this truth because if you don't know your assignment then you're going to go to and fro back and forth. Again, seek not all things that are too hard for thee because you realize that when you start listening to some of these people, they're confounded by the simplest conversations that somebody may come about and say, "Hey, listen, I know this aspect of in the you know whatever you guys are talking about." And whoever you and that person may know really well. And then all of a sudden, he comes and confounds the individual. Because why? Because he's seeking out things that are too hard for thee. And it says, neither search the things that are above thy strength, which is what? Research. Uh, like, seriously, man, if you don't know your, 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 your assignment in this truth, you are not going to know. You're, you're not going to grow. And then you're going to end up what? Doubting your faith. And then you're going to pick up some other doctrine, which is what we're seeing. We're starting to see some little baby one. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But it definitely is coming from our people, which is what bothers me, because this is why they say silly doves. You guys, I mean, silly, sincerely, silly, silly doves. Do your research on what you're trying to teach before you go teach it. Sirach chapter 6, verse 37. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. Why am I reading this? Because that's the point. You got to be rooted in this truth and really examine yourself. It's not just knowing, oh, Leviticus, I know the laws. I know where I'm from. I'm an expert in, in the Northern Kingdom experience. But you have absolutely no growth within yourself. There's a lot of men in our, in, in our familia that tends to have that unfortunateness, man. I don't really realize what the Most High is asking for you or from you. If you're still bitter, angry, can't seem to let go of things, are very emotional, and you're 10 years in this truth, man, no wonder the Most High tends to get rid of people, man. Many are called, but few are chosen. It's, it's, that's the sad part. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord so this won't happen. And meditate continually in His commandments because then if somebody comes by and suggests something, if you're solid in the, in the actual scriptures, 
none of that will actually move you. Because why? He shall establish, because you're established, thy mind and give thee wisdom at, a, at thy own desire. Meaning what? That some idiot is not going to come by and suggest, hey, look, man, we're Sephardic Jews now. Oh, really? You're right. Yeah, we are. What? All that plowing? All, all that, all that, you know, getting rid of the clods or working that ground, that, that, that toughness of dirt just drops the shovel and says, nah, man, I'm going to start a new hole. Wow, man. Colossians. Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 2, it reads, Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Not on things on the earth. Not on silly things of the earth. Somos humanos. Nuestros teléfonos nos distraen. I tend, I'll, I'll point up on top what video this is. I don't usually do that, guys, because I want y'all to watch the video again and take notes, man. And again, I'm going to repeat it again, guys. If you're here for entertainment, you might as well just some subscribe right now because I could care less. I'm not here for that. I'm here to teach our people who they are according to the Bible and how the curses have affected us to this very day. Since 1492 up to this very day, nothing has changed. The curses continually happen to you so-called Hispanics and Native Indians. No other nation of people is going through that. Nobody. Between so, again, if you don't like what I say, if you're emotional, uh, if you're free for entertainment, or you think there's going to be super chats, or some stupid debate, or I don't know, God, God, what, God knows what you're here for. This is not entertainment, okay? This is the Bible. This is, this is our life. At least I can say, this is my life. The Bible is my history. I'm not here to entertain anybody. But whoever wants to stay and learn who they are according to the Bible, like me, like I have, guess what? You'll grow with me. And that I can guarantee because I've grown. Let me continue now. Jewish and black communities in America is complex with periods of division, harmony, hostility, suspicion, and apathy. What are the historical roots of both the cooperation and conflict we see between these two communities today? And how do we create a vision for a brighter future? In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Jewish opinions on slavery were in line with their white neighbor. Pay attention. As, as the politics and these Jewish people were Sephardic Jews as well as Ashkenazis. Okay, don't get it twisted. The we're US. gonna find out right now. All of this, as this is moving forward and pushing our people this way, the so-called the so-called white man, the so-called black man, and if you want to separate the so-called you know Sephardic Jewish man or Ashkenazi Jewish man, they all benefited from. The conquering of these lands. That there's that's not hate talk. That's just those are facts. Those are in our but those are in our school books. Political information provided too as well. This is nothing new. You can look it up online in government government uh, dot org. Shifted. Northern Jews increasingly by the way, I'm Shemitic. So in case anybody wants to say I'm anti anything, no. I come from a lineage of Shem. However you slice it. Oppose slavery, while Southern Jews continued to be sympathetic to slave ownership, though there were notable exceptions. These included Rabbi David Einhorn, who, in 1861, gave an anti-slavery sermon. His congregation erupted in anger, and the rabbi was forced to flee to the north. In the early 20th century, the Jewish community's demographics and opinions began to shift. Jews migrating from hostile countries settled in northeastern American cities, where they encountered black Southerners fleeing Jim Crow laws and other forms extreme racism. Coming, Coming from, from anti-Semitic Europe, Europe, many Jews, Jews recognized and drew attention to the parallels in the black and Jewish experience. Some, Some Yiddish newspapers referred to violent attacks on black Americans, like, like the Tulsa Massacre, as pogroms. However, even with these positive developments, Division remained between black and Jewish Americans. Both groups were lightning rods for other people's hatred, and many Jews who aspired to assimilate or just make a living were afraid of associating too much with the group so openly mistreated. This distance remained until the 1930s, when the rise of the Nazi party in Germany paralleled an increase in anti-Semitism in the U.S. Fearful and in need of allies, Jewish Americans sought support, and the black community was one of the few to join their cause. Black and Jewish organizations 
began working together to challenge employment and housing discrimination, combat racial and religious violence, and fight for inclusion in social and professional spheres. In the years following the Second World War, now keep in mind that uh, in these years, right, um, we were going through uh, fumigation, gas baths, uh, deportation, um, lynching, murder. The the um, the sheriffs at the border in Texas. The Sephardic like we got people that are not our people that we're benefiting from. I'm I'm gonna read it as a matter of fact. So you guys won't say that I'm doing hate talk. I'll read it. I'll just I'll just read it. Let's go to Isaiah. Okay, because this is it right here. This is it with the video. Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56 and then uh, verse 10. And it reads, his watchmen are blind. Hmm. I wonder why. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying. I'm sorry, lying down, loving to slumber. They're all lying. They're blind. They're ignorant. Why? Because they're not doing the research and they're trying to show some people some new things. Guess what? I even I remember listening to one particular uh, I don't know what they were doing, and I could see I can see I can sense this this older gentleman saying to this particular group, "Listen, guys, you know, like you really need to know your history before you go and teach some other history, man." Like it almost seemed like he was like like supplication, almost in a sense, like you know, like I, I'm I like he listened to you guys, he was sticking around, he would listen, but then he's just like I don't even know what y'all teaching anymore, so it's like. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess, you know, I'll try to listen to you guys. But like, and see, guys, that's confusion. And see, if you're a watchman, if you're if you're out there teaching Israel, you need to know what you're teaching for sure. You can't come with confusion. Now, if you're starting to separate and realize that, hey, you know, one West doctrine, it's, you know, teaching this and that. That's different. We're separating from not the Bible. We're just coming back to our own people. But then all of a sudden you want to include others like you. We got proof that it's not possible. Watch. Yay. They are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. I don't know why these things happen. Maybe the Most High just says, you know what? I've had enough with you. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain, for his quarter. You realize that? Everyone for his gain and for his quarter. And the only reason why. We keep falling for this is because of this. The ox, uh, Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox know it is owner. And he asks his master crib, meaning the, the you know, a donkey knows where his owner lives. An ass knows who his owner is. I mean, I mean a, a, an ox. But you so-called Hispanics, you do not know. My people do not consider. No, why? Because then all of a sudden now you're saying, well, no, black so-called blacks are not our people. Uh, it's the Spaniards. Now they're our people. The same ones that conquered and completely pillaged and destroyed all of us. And it wasn't just, quote-unquote, Sephardic Jews, or, I'm sorry, quote-unquote, Eskenazi Jews, as, as you guys like to say. No, that's not even true. It actually was a couple of other nation of people, and I'm going to show you right now. But before we do, let me show you this real quick, okay? I just want to show you all something. This is from the history of Ireland. All right? I'm going to show you all. Colonization regarding Africa, or at least Phoenicians. Okay, watch this. In the, uh, this is from page ten. It says, "In the days of Herodotus, by whom first vaguely, vaguely, and without any certain knowledge of a sea uh, beyond the straits, the importation of tin from Cassiterite is mentioned." Now, I did a class on tin and who the uh, Tarshish are and who it is, and it's the Phoenicians. It's the African Europeans. Okay, the ones that are here. It is hardly too much to assume that the Phoenicians had for some time formed a settlement in these islands. Watch this. They, they, that they must have had a factory here is pretty generally conceded of 10, by the way, up in there, right? But, but a people whose system it was to make colonization the basis of their power. What? Yeah. Guys, I have a... Uh, here, I'm going to show you. This is from a Webster's Dictionary... Um, let me see, hold up. Yep, here it goes. From Webster's Dictionary. I'm going to show you on my, um, my uh, Facebook page. I have, oh, I'm going to show you this real quick. We mean it. We mean it. 
You so-called Hispanics? You so-called Native Indians? Look at this. Asiaticos, Semitas, Shematic. All right, watch this. I don't want to get off topic, but look. These are the Hebrews. Y'all are the Hebrews, look. And these are so-called Africans. And they're not from Africanus, some white man. It's actually Afriki. He was a king. I may actually show you guys right now. Look at that. Otim Indio, Otima, Otim, Otomi, Mexico. See that, brethren? You have no, you have every reason to wake up. Hold on. Because I don't want to show privacy to other brethren that may not want to show themselves. I have to respect that. Okay, so let's see. What do we got? Um, Phoenicians, colonization. Here it goes right here. Let me look for it. Give me a second. Let's see if I can find it. If not, I will uh, move. Oh. Um, is that it? They must have had colonization. Space power surely had luck position. Um, let me continue. Let me continue. I think I'll, I'll, I'll find it eventually because I'm going to look at these pictures anyways. All right. So as you know, colonization, meaning what? A certain type of people are going to have this type of system of colonization. Okay. And quite frankly, look, so irresistible indeed is the, here, page 17. So irresistible indeed is the, free, the force of tradition in favor of a Spanish colonization. You see? The Africans, the Phoenicians, went into Spain and colonized the Spaniards, the Goths, or the Visogs. I don't remember exactly who they were. That every new pounder of hypothesis is on the subject is forced to admit this event as part of his scheme. Watch this. Thus, Buchanan, in supposing colonies to have passed from Gaul to Ireland, contrived to carry them first to the west of Spain. And the learned Welsh antiquary. You guys can read this book, and it literally tells you that the Phoenicians conquered Europe. In case y'all don't know, okay, you guys need to do your research. The Africans have been up there since they've been trying to get up there for a while, but finally they conquered Europe in 711 AD. Up until 1492, but in about 1200 uh, AD, you started seeing some loss of power. But not necessarily all the way, even after 1492, you still had Africans, so-called royal Africans, passing laws that affected us. Now, I'm, I'm bringing this up because I want you all to know that the so-called Phoenicians, okay, they conquered Europe. Let me see if this says here. The heathen Irish, in, in their feeling of re reverence for particular stones and rocks, but follow the example of most of the Eastern nations. I don't know. That wasn't it. Um, I had seen something here. Hold on, let me see. Look. On being carried by, by his captor to Ireland, the young Patrick was purchased as a slave. Uh, what's this? Uh, do, 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 do. Mm. Move to the next one. Let's see. Already sold. We uh Patrick whom I have purchased. Okay, anyhow, enough of that. The point being is you guys can read it, okay? So just, just I'm not trying to be short on you guys, but I want to keep moving forward. All right, I just want to show you all that the Phoenicians were up there, okay? The so-called Africans were up there. This is from uh, the Golden Age, all right? It's, uh, I have the book, so I'm, but I'm using um, Ar Archive. I actually bought it at a good price, and now it's like shooting up the sky. I don't know, maybe people are buying it now. But I, I've been showing this for some time. I don't know. If, I'm not trying to say it was me. Anyhow, uh, I don't want to get in that spirit. Um, all right. So let's go to uh, page 66. Let's see what we got here. All right. What do we got? Uh, let's see. Let me read this real quick. According to General Mary's, uh, Macy, Mor Morian is said to have been 
the architect of Stonehenge, now as a Negro, is still known as a Morian in English. May not this indicate that Morian belonged to the black race, the Kushite builders? Hmm. It should be noted that for a very long period, the Dutch language used more and more re on for black Africans among the Lorma community in modern Libya. The name Morian, Morian is still prominent. And then guess what? I have a book that it's actually uh, it's the Irish names. And it actually gives you the root meaning of like Dutch or uh, Dublin or Dub. It means black. You see, Dutch language used more in Moronian. I don't, ha I don't, I don't want to look for the book right now, guys. But um, then my, I, I, I put it up in another class. I can't remember the name of the class. Uh, let's see. Let me go here. The expulsion from Spain and Desperios Moors. Watch this. In Iberia, Christian pressure on Moors grew resistibly. Finally, in 1942, Granada, the last important Muslim stronghold in Al, Al Andulas, was taken by the soldier of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, and the Moors were expelled from Spain. In 1496, to appease Isabella, King Manuel of Portugal announced the royal decree banishing Moors from the portion of the peninsula. You guys see this? The Spanish King Philip expelled remaining Moors by the special, by the special decree issued in 1609. Fully 3.5 million Moors or Moriscos, as their descendants were called, as their descendants were called, left Spain between 1492 and 1610. Now, these Moors, supposedly Moriscos, they were also Jews, Jewish people. Yes, they were. Uh, let me see. Let me go to page 21. For some reason, I got here. Page 21, it reads, not an accident. Um, oh, it goes here. Crash of Moorish power in the middle of the 13th century. Although this lineage, you see that? The crash of Moorish power in the middle of the 13th century. Although this lingered on in enclaves like Granada until 1492 and further, was to make a tremendous difference. That's why when you see the wars between Spain and the Dutch and Germany and, and, and Britain, right, for power. It's because you're dealing with uh, the so-called white man and the so-called black man still. Not only did, they, did the economic and political future of Africa fall dramatically, but I'm, I'm sorry, I skipped it, uh, was to make a tremendous difference. It is not an accident that the year Columbus sailed was the same year that the African general in Granada, the African generals in Granada surrendered, Ferdinand, surrendered to Ferdinand and Isabella. I'm going somewhere. I am going, definitely going somewhere. Watch this, page 87. Look, they made a difference. They made a, a huge difference. So who are these people? Because it sure is not the Sephardic, quote-unquote, white ones. Watch this. It says, let's see. Uh, okay, where you at? Mm -hmm. A second. Page eighty-seven. Go to page eighty-eight, third paragraph. What does it say? Okay, fourteen ninety-two. The Moors had lost all Spain except the Kingdom of Granada. The Christians, although not free from the internal disputes, were finally united with the mar marriage of Ferdinand and Isabella. Okay. Now it says here the the United Christian forces surrounded the city of Granada and blocked and blockaded for eight months. The Moorish king, Abdul Abu Abdallah, also known as Boabdil, finally surrendered. The Moors lingered in Spain for a little more than a century. By 1610, through the expulsion and migration, a million, a million, among them many Jews, had returned to northern Africa and western Europe. Now, how could Jews hide in northern Africa if they were black or white? The expulsion of the Moors from the and Andalusia was a serious setback to modern civilization. As you can see, the Moors and the Jews of that time were mingling together. We saw it in the video, right? They were helping the, the Moors too. They didn't mention the Moors, but you know for sure. In 1492, the last bulwark of Moors gave way before the crusade of Fernand and Isabella, and Granada fell all, Spain, fell all Spain's greatness. 
For a brief while, indeed, the reflection of the Moorish splendors cast a borrower a light upon the history in the land which had been worn with its sunny radiance. The great epoch of Isabella, Charles V, the Philip II, of Columbus, Cortez, and Pizarro shed a hollow about dying moments of mighty state. Then followed the abomination of desolation, the rule of Inquisition, the blacklist, the blackness of darkness in which Spain had been plugged, plunged ever since. So you see this, Isabella, Charles V, Philip II of Columbus, Cortez, Pizarro, they're all Moors. Some anthropologists have assigned that the Moors are arbitrary, brown race, and others have labeled them as dark white. Mm -hmm. And perhaps the African anthropologists would call them the same, that would call, would call the same people black, pale blacks. Even the Arabs, who are always a minority in the so-called Arab culture in the Middle East, regarded a dark complexion as, ba as a badge of honor. See this? Primitive Arabs who were ruling element of the uh, Konswati people. And here, oh, that's what I was looking for. Uh, see, Mosai always reminds us. Oh, Swati, Swati. Give me a second. Um, I have a, a Webster's Dictionary um, app from 1828. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to look for it right now. And it basically gives us a definition of Swati. But that definition is based off 1828. So at that time, when people use the word Swarthy, you were referencing a particular definition. Okay, so I'm almost there. Let me see if it's coming up soon. Okay, okay, give me a second. I'm almost there. Give me a second, guys. Just bear with me, okay? Mm. I saw it a little while ago too. Hold on, maybe it's here. No, it's not. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Here it goes. Right here. Perfect. Watch this. This is dated from um, 1828. Webster's Dictionary. Webster's Dictionary, 1828. It says, Swarthy, being of a dark hue or dusky complexion, tawny, in warm climates, the complexion of men in universal Swarthy are black. The Moors, Spaniards, and Italians are more Swarthy than the French, the Germans, and English. What? Wait, let's read that again. The Moors, the Spaniards, and Italians, these are Sephardic Jews. And Sephardic Jews are more Swarthy than the French. These guys are Africans who picked up customs and conversions. I'm going to show you all right now. Okay. Let me show you something real quick. Let me see if I can go back. See if it's here. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? Let's continue in the book. I don't want to get distracted. And I'll find it like before, like the other one. Let's go to page 91. Uh, page 91. It says... Uh, Watch this, okay? Chancellor Williams is perhaps even more blunt about the ethnicity of the Moors. He writes, now, again, just who were the Moors? The answer is very easy. The original Moors, like the original Egyptians, were black Africans. As amalgamation became more and more widespread, only the Berbers and Arabs and coloreds in the Moroccan territories were called Moors, while the darkest and black-skinned Africans were called Blackamoors. Eventually, black was dropped from Blackamoor. In North Africa and Morocco in particular, all Muslim Arabs, mixed breeds, and Berbers are generally regarded as Moors. The African blacks, having had even the, this name taken from them, must contend for recognition uh, as Moors. See that, guys? Let's go to page 330. A little too far.
330. Is it 330? No. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it right here. Oh, 331. Watch what it says. Uh, this is uh, the, the Moors in Portugal, same book, uh, page. Um, it doesn't show, but you guys can find it, okay? It reads, hold on, let me see. It reads, For all Negroes or black Moors are descendants of Cush. You see that, guys? All the people in Europe, okay? And keep in mind that they were already mixing with the so-called white man. For all Negroes and black Moors are descendants of Cush, the sons of Ham who was the son of Noah. But whatever difference there is between the Negro and the Tony Moore, it is a fact that they are all of the same ancestry. Now, this book, some people say that this guy is a pseudo, but Leo Africanus was born at that time. And I'm going to show you all right now because I don't want no, no silly dove. And I'm not just talking about anybody in particular. You know, I'm basically saying anybody that wants to go ahead and try to say that Ivan Sertima is a pseudo. Okay, fine. He just referenced somebody. That's all he did. Okay? So let's find out who he referenced. Reference. Okay, I think it's right here. Let's read this first. Okay? It says, the, oops. So you can see, guys, they know that they're not our people. But, you know, obviously, who's not going to want to nowadays? The Egyptians, uh, as Moses writes, fetched their orig original from Mezraim, the son of Cush, the son of Cam Sham, or Cam, or Ham, the son of Noah. And the Hebrews called both the countries and inhabitants of Egypt by the name of Mezraim. You see, he's not a Hebrew. He separates himself. See that? He definitely separates himself. Watch this real quick. Now let's go to it. Uh, where are you? Mm -hmm. Look, God says, of all which, of all which nations, of all which nations, some are Gentiles that worship idols. Here, let me go up. Moreover, this part of the whole world is inhabited especially by five principal nations, to wit, by the people called Kafri or Kafetas, I mean brown. That is to say outlaws or lawless, but kafeta is also mean brown, by the Ab Ab Abyssinians, the Egyptians, the Arabians, and the Africans or Moors. Okay, remember that. Properly so called, which last are of two kinds, namely white or tiny Moors, mm -hmm. meaning Jews, Sephardic Jews. Let's continue. And Negroes or black Moors. Of all which nations, some are Gentiles with which, which worship idols, others of sects of Muhammad, some others Christian, and some Jewish in religion. Let me read that again. And some Jewish in religion, meaning some Africans who are white or tawny, are also Jewish, which means who? Sephardic Jews, right here. Because, you know, you, this is, matter of fact, let me show you. I'm going to show you. I'm not lying. Hey, facts tell, stories sell. I don't, I don't sell stories. Look, Ashkenazis in the northern part, Sephardic in the southern part. But these guys, not like these guys, not as many, these guys are white and dark and are Moors and are what? Africans, are Phoenicians. Of course they're up there as well. But it says here, properly so-called, which last are two of kinds, namely white or tawny. So these white or tawny Moors and Negroes or black Moors were either Christians, idolaters, Mohammedans, uh, Jewish, the greatest part of which people are thought to be descendants from Ham, the cursed son of Noah except some Arabians of the lineage of Sem, which afterwards 
uh, passed into Africa. Watch this. For all the, uh, this is, uh, say this, it says, all which opinions and reporters are to be uh, understood only one only of the original of the tiny people, that is to say, of the Numidians and barbarians. For all the Negroes and Blackamoors take their descent from Cush, the son of Cam, who was the son of Noah. But whatsoever difference between the Negroes and the tiny Moors, meaning Sephardic Jews too, as well as the white ones, cer certain it is that they had all one beginning. For the Negroes are descendants of the Philistines, and the Philistines of Mizraim, and the son of Cush. But the Tani Moors fetch their pedigree from the Sabians. Watch this. It is evident that Saba me, was begotten of Ramah, which was the eldest son of Cush. It's in Genesis. Genesis 10, right here. Look, you see this. Diverse other opinions, uh, diverse other opinions there be as touching this matter. Like, watch what they say. In a sense, like, however, or which, because they seem not so necessary we have purposely omitted meaning that they don't feel that it made any sense to adam because they either repeated themselves or it wasn't true this guy stands by his ground this guy was born in that time leo africanus he's a black man he calls himself leo africanus his name is the, the geographical history of africa written by arabic and Italian by John Leo, a more born in Granada and brought up in Barbie, right? But he goes by Leo Africanus. Where did I read it? John Leo, more. See, more means black. So you, brother, you so-called black man or black woman that has a last name of Moore, that didn't come from your slave master. That was just your last name. Straight up. And if a white man has that last name, that means he was your slave. Those are facts. Facts tell, stories tell, guys. I don't got time for that. Uh, let's go to page 165. It's taking me to 165. Let's see. Uh, 165. Oh, not too much. 165. Okay, 164, and it's just to be 65. It says here 65. What am I looking for? Moreover, the mighty king finds crown. Mm. Let's go to the next one because I don't I don't know what. Ah, I had already read this. It's not. It's okay. All right, and then one more thing, guys. One more thing before I continue with another another with my topic. Look, this is from. Not, I'm not going off topic because I'm trying to touch on what, why, why this is important. Because if you're saying, or that people are saying now that so called, so called the Sephardic Jews are our people, well, guess what? The Sephardic Jews, as well as the Black Moors or Africans, both came to this continent not through slave ships, not at all. They came directly, and and some of them or most of them owned slaves like these guys, just like the Sephardic Jew. Watch this. Few Negro owners of slaves. So, you, you know, you so-called uh, One West Campers, IUIC, GMS, Sakari, uh, IUCPK. Stop blaming the white man. man. Matter of fact, you know what? Like, I remember this kid, because you're a kid, uh, in Sakari. He's like, I want 200 lives, 200 million lives, and after that, then uh, you can talk to me. So, w are you going to ask for 200 million lives of black people, too? Because the, the enslaved ones were our people. Look, you guys can read this book. It's called Free Negro Owners of Slaves, United States of America, 1830. And a lot of these guys, they didn't even want to report that they were owning slaves. That's how sneaky they are. Hmm, wonder why. Look, State Journal of Negro History, Columbia, Kentucky, Georgia, Louisiana, uh, many in Louisiana, many slaves in Louisiana. Look, look. These are all slaves. Okay, total slaves, seventeen. These are black people. Okay, they own. These are slaves. Guess who? They're natives. A lot of them were natives. Look at this guy. Uh, right here. What is he at? There's one where he has like a hundred. 
And you know how they got these lands? Through servitude from them bringing their own family members at first. So, like, if you were going to bring me over from Africa or U Europe, there was a program called Head Right. And you say, okay, this guy's going to work my land. So they gave you acres. So that man works. It's case, he's like the, the so-called servitude slave. is like a down payment for the land. And then once you pay it off, seven years or four years, however, however long you want to hold them to, because most of them were family members. So all these people here own slaves, and that's how they own slaves. Because if they own slaves, that means they would get acreage. That's how the acreage was given. The lottery, all of that stuff. So look, Maryland, Maine. Uh, what else? Just like the so-called uh, Jewish history and documents show that they had uh, financed the shipping regarding slavery, right? These were also Sephardic Jews. So was the black man. See, the black man in the in in the in the, in well, I'll speak. It speaks for itself. Look. I'm not lying, guys. Those are not Eskenazis. So any of these people in Mexico, in America, they weren't helping us at all. I guarantee that. I know that for a fact. All the people in telenovelas, guess what? They're all them. And they don't, they, they do not want us as part of them. We are not the same people. Second uh, Timothy, okay, chapter 3, verse 1. It reads, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Hmm. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Why do I say that? Because instead of thinking of the people, they think of themselves. Oh, I got the right doctrine today. Let me go teach it. And then you confuse more people. You're thinking of yourself. Covetous, boasters, proud, proud. Oh, I, I know my, I know my history. Which one? I know the ten tribes. That's not what he meant. He meant in the last twenty, in the last hundred years. Do you know your history of Mexico? You don't. So, which is why he, the gentleman, was saying, "I'm sorry, coming back to that story." The gentleman was saying, "Don't go and teach other nationalities or other heritage if you don't even know your own." Oh well, I'm not from there because I don't even look Hispanic. Oh my God, you look white then. Okay, good, perfect. I'm glad. Now you get a free ticket for um, slavery. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.5, it says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Verse 7, Ever having, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth. This is from a book called, Oops, sorry. Jews and Muslims in British Col uh, Colony, Colony, America. Genealogy history. I'm sorry. Didn't pronounce it right. Watch what it reads right here. So, Sephardims in the New World had a variety of occupations and lived at all levels. Of the socioeconomic spectrum, according to markets, they were shoemakers, tailors, blacksmith, blacksmith, tavern keepers, peddlers, mariners, masons, ship captains. Hmm. You mean slave, slave ship captains? Factors, bakers, gold and silver smith, butchers, tanners, physicians, notary, mine and mill owners. Mine owners? I, I Y'all know, remember that, right? Merchants, candy manufacturers, slave dealers. Slave dealers. The Sephardim, the Sephardic Jews, were slave dealers as well. City mayors, priests, bishops, bankers, tax collectors, and provincial governors. Judaic religious traditions were usually observed in private. Oh. <sighs> Worship services were held in homes. Anyone who were group, blah, 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 I don't even want to read them. Because of the Torah, the, these secret Sephardims would use the biblical Old Testament and the Psalms. Sometimes also books also like Joseph, Ancient History of the Jews. I have that book. Now, as you can see, they were what? Everything but slaves. Everything but this here. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 44, and it reads, actually, 3. The stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Did they not get very high, the Sephardims? Are they not higher than us? Blacksmith, bankers, doctors, we were, we were getting land taken from us. 
The stranger that is within you shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be he, he shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Why? Look at him. Blacksmiths, tavern keepers, peddlers, mariners, masons, bankers, bakers, goldsmiths. I'm sorry, where's the bankers at? No, I didn't say bankers. Did I say yeah, I say bankers? Ba barkers. Barkers. I, I'm still, I think it's bankers. Gold smith, uh, gold and silver smith, butchers, tanners, physicians, notaries, mine and mill owners, merchants, candy manufacturers, and then the major one, man. Look at that. Slave dealers, and right after that, city mayors, priests, bishops, bow, bankers, that's right, tax collectors, and physical provincial governors. We did not have the authority. Because remember the book that said that if you, uh, that I showed you guys from the Mysteries of the Pyramids, page 16, it talked about how if you didn't turn verdant to Christianity, you couldn't even be any of these. But look at these Sephardic Jews, man. They're right in. They're not on the bottom. They're on top of us. That's for sure. Without a doubt. And, by the way, this, these Sephardic Jews here, they follow this guy. Mohammed, Mohammed, I, God, I used to pronounce it properly. Mohammedis or something. Mohammedis, something like that. Also referred to as acronym Rabban. It's a Sephardic Jew philosopher. He studies the Torah, but he also is an ast astrologer, astronomer, physician. And he studies what? The Talmud. Mm -hmm. he, look, that's the Talmud, or Torah. Right? I'm telling you guys. And these guys are so-called Sephardic Jews. And watch this. Matter of fact, let's look at it now. Watch this real quick. I'm going to show you something. Look. All right. Let me look for something, guys. Give me a second. Trying to look for something here. All right, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. No more. No more. Let me see. Maybe it's on this page. There it goes, I think. No, I just saw it. Yeah, this is it, I think. This is the word I'm looking for. There's a word I'm looking for. Let me read this, okay? Also known as Sephardic Jews or Sephardims, and sometimes referred to modern scholars as Hispanic Jews. All right? So that's this whole, the whole so-called concept. A Sephardic Jewish explained Latino, Ladino. I'm going to bring that up too, okay? And it's not what y'all think. Uh, our Jewish dysphoria and uh, in the Iberian Peninsula, uh, let's see, the term Sephardim derives from Hebrew Sephardim from Spain, basically, right? And also Mish, Mish Rahi, Jewish of Western Asia and North Africa. Now it says here, although, or, or, oh, this right here. All right, watch this. The majority of them were influenced by the Sephardi style of lethargy, the law and customs from the influence of Andalusian schools and Muhammad, Muhammadis. Many Iberian Jewish exiles later sought refuge in the pre existing Jewish communities. Right? You can see. So, Mohammedis, you can see his face. Right? You see his face? Just saying. And then this right here, Andalusian. Watch this. I found that interesting. And I remember the word. And I'm like, man, I read that somewhere. Oh, here it is right here. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it real quick. All right. Let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is this it? Uh, nope. 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 Uh, let's see. Whenever da, 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 their names were Spanish, Portuguese, during the rabbi, they generally. Oh, give me a second. German, most basically Latino. Fairy tale. Oh, that's right. I know where it's at. I know where it's at. I remember now. I didn't want to go 
right on my book. Here it goes right here. Give me a second. It's from The Dogs of Conquest, okay? So in The Dogs of Conquest, the page is showing how... Hold on, let me see. Let me get to it. Give me a second. Uh, where you at? Dogs of Conquest. This is right here. Yeah, let me get the book. Hold on. Give me a second, guys. All right. This is from A Dogs of Conquest, okay? And I believe it's page... Hey, let me look for it back here. I know what I'm doing. Give me a second. Give me a second. What's the word I'm looking for? Andalusian. And Here's the background of my daughter. Oh man, I had it. Oh, this sucks. My apologies, guys. I I thought I thought I saved it, and I thought I picked the picture of it. Um, but apparently I didn't. Maybe I did. Hold on. Let me look here. Give me a second. It's important. We got to read this, okay? So just bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me, because I did take a picture of it. Okay, here it goes. Oh, I see. It, I didn't upload it. Okay, so it says here. Uh, this is from the Dogs of Conquest page, the beginning page. Let me go. Oh, it's over here too. It's X5, XY. XV. Okay, so it's XV uh, paragraph where it says the story, okay? Preface. So it reads, the story of the introduction of these European dogs into the Americas began in 1483 when the Spanish wrested final control from Portugal of what was become the most important way station on the voyage. Remember, guys, this is from this book, okay? Uh, this book right here, Dogs of Conquest, all right? It says here, um, the Canary Islands, on her succession, Queen Isabella inherited along with her throne a number of men who were, who were to aid in maintaining her empire. One of these was the noble and notorious sadistic. Watch this, guys. One of these was the noble and notoriously sadistic Andalusian Pedro de Vera Mendoza. But when his brawling became an embarrassment, Isabel decided to shift his field of action. You see this, guys? He was in a sad notoriously sadistic Andalusian. So these guys here, these guys here, he was from the school of where? The same school of them. The same school of them. These guys, these Sephardic Jews are not our people. Who in the world ever said or even got that in anybody's brain? Watch this. Watch this. Look, if you look at this. Jews were soon persuaded through our Mexico suspicious activities that could brand someone a Jew, including bathing on Fridays, blah, blah, blah. But see, these guys, they were not here for, for to help us out. Cinco de Mayo, the struggle of Mexican independence and the Mexican Jews. Every war that you guys know about, it was between them. Watch. I'm going to go back to my page. Go back to my page because I think that's in there. Oh, let me see. Mm. Yeah, let's do it. Watch, so I'm going to take you guys through something like this. Okay. This is from the book 1490, oh, the other 1492, the Jewish settlement in New, in New America. Okay. Opportunity came when Ladinos began fighting among themselves over whether Yucatan should be part of Mexico. These Ladinos were Sephardic Jews. You see that? Began fighting among themselves to whether Yucatan should be part of Mexico, as it is today an autonomous public, greatly outnumbered by Mexican forces. They had to choose but to draft Indians. 
to do this, they relied on the bat tops who, like Sir Williams Johnson, Mohawk chiefs, were given commission in, in the army. Many Myers were glad to enlist, believing that they believing that if they fought besides their Ladino, meaning Sephardic Jew countrymen, they would earn respect for themselves and their rights. In this, they were deceived. But by then, they were also armed and trained. You see, Sephardic Jews. Ladinos. This is from, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the American Indian. It has to be. Yeah, it is. I'll, I'll, let me see if I took the picture. These Indians are civilized Ladinos because their village and natural surroundings are un, 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 are uncognigenial. Look, watch this. In a, in, uh, Okay, here it goes. Let me continue reading. Because they're escaping from troubles they might at, have at home or because they were wanderers. They bring themselves to enter the Spaniard service. They are assigned part, repartidos to, their, to these farms with their wives and children, four and six or more to each, just as they would naturally settle. Normally, they live there and cultivate their own garden and fields for their necess necessities. In addition to what the masters they serve give them in clothing, cash, or food. The masters. On the majority of the farms, there are superintendents, mayordomos. They call them taskmasters too, right? We're going to see a video later on. Spanish soldiers and, or mestizos. The sons of Spaniards, meaning Sephardic Jews, and Indian women or mulattoes or free Negroes. These kept track of the figure of... For the sowing and the harvest and seeing that the people would work and do all necessary. And on all the farm ranchers, Indies, and important, they are to be found, have excellent salaries, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sure. As you can see, here we see that the Spaniards separate themselves from our people. And these guys are Ladinos, meaning they're what? Sephardic Jews. This is from, oh yeah, that's from Inscription of the Indies. Okay, that was that page. Uh, I let me see what what page is this. Let me read this. The small settlers, elites of independent Yucatan and Guatemala, bolstered themselves by making mestizos, those of mixed bloods who inspired as, as Hispanic culture, into ordinary whites. The two, known collective as Ladinos and Latin or Latins, together form one third of the total population at most. But they had inherited Spain's imperial apparatus, her courts militia and jails with that and help of the foreign interests they created not true nations but internal colonies that exploited the indigenous majority more ruthless than ever the same yucatan the same ladinos that were fighting amongst themselves these are sephardic jews they never cared for our people let's see what we got all right this is from, I believe, this book here. It says, Whenever they went to the refuge, carried with them the memories of Spain. Their names were Spanish or more, were Portuguese. That's why you have some silly dubs showing last names of like Gutierrez or Gonzalez or Perez or Huertas. Well, guess what? They own slaves. My last name is Gutierrez because my great-great-great-grandfather was owned by them. My grandfather worked for them. And see, you guys don't know that because you're not even from over there. That's what the gentleman was saying. I can't go teaching new things if you don't even know your own history. Silly dubs, man. That's the sad part. That is the sad part. Y'all make our people look ridiculous. Let's see. Uh, what do we got? Okay, we got this. Fairy okay, look. This is what they say. The Ten Lost Tribes in the area of Israel, an American fairy tale. An American fairy tale. Watch this. We, the indigenous people in Guatemala, declare and denounce before the world more than four centuries of discrimination, denial, repression, and exploitation and massacre committed by the foreign invaders and continued by their descendants to the present day. The suffering of our people has come down throughout the centuries since 1524 when, when, there arrived, when they arrived in these lands, the assassins, the criminal Pedro de Alvarado, a Sephardic Jew. Guatemala is socially and politically archaic, but its archaism is, is, lies not as Ladino Guatemalans tend to think in the highly traditional Maya population, but in the way naked power is welded by the ruling race and class. Guatemala has been called the South Africa of Americas. 
but abuse of the Maya majority. About 60% of the population by the Ladino minority have been far more ruthless, more callous, more violent, and more effective than the well-known evils of the Boer Republic. Boer Republic, meaning in South Africa. It hurts, but we got to do it. Let me see what I'm looking for. Mm. Uh, I cannot find what I'm looking for there. I think we're all set on that. But I want to show y'all something real quick, okay? See, for, for you people that honestly don't realize what you're saying, um, these Sephardic Jews, or these Jews came with people, okay? Let's see, is this it? Let's see, is this this one? I think it's this one here. Yeah. Okay, it's coming up. See, look. Jewish pioneers. Vignog admits that Columbus became so thoroughly Spanish as to lose the use of his mother tongue. In none of the, in none of the evidence, however, does Vignu find ground of the Hebraic origin of the, of the discoverer. That... This great man wrote in biblical style. He was fond of quoting the prophets. By choice, he preferred to read books that were either biblical, biblical or Jewish in origin, meaning the Talmud. He himself were a, wrote a book of prophecies. Columbus left a legacy to a Jew. Jews protected him. Jews protected him. Sephardic and Ashkenazis. He was a various. He thought himself as the messenger of Jehovah. Finally, he had a fresh, colored complexion, fair hair, and an aquiline, aquiline nose. Color complexion meaning he was brown, he was dark, he was tawny. I'm bringing stuff out because I'm I'm connecting this 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 these, these this nation of people with another nation of people. So we don't get twisted, we don't get confused. Watch this. The popularity starts in uh, the starts the Negro in the United States in 1619. In, in, wait, is this it? Uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm looking for. Is that the page? This is the book. Mm, let's see. However, it is safe to assume that there were other Negroes in that expedition as there are abundant evidence of their being with later Spanish explorer as the Aviles, Sephardic Jew. Hernando de Soto, Sephardic Jew. Narvaez, Sephardic Jew. Coronado Tristín de Luna and Menéndez, Safari Jews. Other, another important fact, the Spaniards of that time were much mixed with Negroes. Oh, my dear Jesus. And had been from before the Moorish invasion of 711 A.D. Simon Bolivar reminded Spanish Americans that it is time that they were not pure Europeans to begin with. Spain itself, he said, has ceased to be Europeans by its African blood, its institution, and character. Napoleon or someone before him had rightly said Africa begins at the Pyrenees. In short, the United States was not founded by pure Nordic race. Why? Because they were these guys. Again. Look. The word Safari itself has been explained as a form of North Africa Gothic as swart black you see that guys but some of them aren't black because i said they were white or tawny obviously because they were mixing with the white folks oh man the word safari itself has been explained as a form of north african gothic swart an etymology with roots in the fifth century ce vandals and visigog gothic invasion let me read it again for you slow slow brothers in case no offense the word Sephardi itself has been explained as a form of North African Gothic swart, black, dark. And uh, they were blacksmiths, Sephardims, 
Colonial America, American Jew. That's a good book right there. Look. There's a lot of history that we've been lied but we've been told that isn't true, which is probably why you guys are over here maybe wondering if I'm even right about this. Adrian Black, you see all of these things? You guys can look up this this book. 16, since by 1626, the West Indian Company had been formed with Isaac de Razier serving as the chief commercial gene in the Netherlands. Who are these guys? Jews and Muslims. The, the Sephardic Jews, or the Jews in general, and the black men. They both enslaved our people too. Just like the so-called Caucasian white men. Just like that. It's no different. You know, again, man. Um, here, let me read this real quick. And then I'll be done with this topic. And then I'm just going to continue. And I should be almost finished. Honestly. This is not a hard topic to touch. Um, it's not the scriptures. So for me, it's not a big deal. Uh, watch this real quick. Okay. You guys need to pay attention. Remember, guys. Let me read. Let me read this real quick. I think a little bit. Little more. I need some scripture, man. Honestly, I I need to have some. Here it goes. First Corinthians, chapter thirteen, verse eleven. Okay. Oh, I was scrolling the wrong one. Uh, it says, "When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things." Here I'll say it like this: When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Maybe, maybe that will help you guys understand the difference. Because, quite frankly, look at this. The Phoenicians colonized Cadiz. They constructed the famous fleet which aided Semiramis Sem in the invasion of India. They taught in navigation to the Jews. They sailed around the whole continent of Africa from the Arabian Sea to the Cape God. See, these guys were in cahoots with each other. They were in total cahoots with each other. And then that right there, Andalusian, from the Dogs of Conquest. Come on, guys. He used dogs to kill our people. This is a Sephardic Jew. He went to the schooling. Learned from Mohammedis. Mohammedis, I believe. Right? So, let's go to Job. I think that's enough of that fact, you know, history stuff. Uh, let's go to Job now. Job chapter 8, verse 8. That's why, that's why the Bible says this, all right? It doesn't just say, oh, uh, the 10 tribes. No, man, you got to go back, 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 years by year, 10, 10 years, 15, 20, 25, 30. Why? Because you got to talk to your people. You got to make the Bible li like alive as today. I know my history. I'm from the 10 tribes. No, he meant in the last 100 years, what do you know about your people? Absolutely nothing. For I inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers. That's not the only time he says it. Deuteronomy 32 and 7. And it reads, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. Listen, the Bible is our historic book. It's the past, present, and future. So that means that currently, the current events are reflecting the Bible, or the Bible reflects the current events. With our situation. Let's go to the New Testament now. 15 and 14. It reads. Alright. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are... Oh, no, no, that's not it. That's not what I'm looking for. 15 and 4, it says. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Because we obviously stick to the scriptures. And through the scriptures, we're revealed what's going on. It's as prophets or teachers. We got to kind of like... Kind of sense the air a little bit, right? We need to pay attention to the olive tree for that leaf to fall. So if you're thinking like a child, you're not going to be seeing it. If you're thinking like a man, you will catch it. Joshua 1.8. Let's just get through this, man. I'm almost done. Joshua 1.8, and it reads, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but shall but th thou shalt meditate therein day and night, thou shalt me that, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9, I have not, have not I commanded thee, be strong of a good courage. Be not afraid in your belief. 
if somebody comes by and says, yeah, you know, I think, you know what, brother, I appreciate that, man, but keeping the commandments of God is what I'm focusing on. And that's exactly it. Be not afraid, neither be thee thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is the is with thee wherever thou goest. But when you lose hope, nah, -uh, it ain't gonna happen. So let's kind of educate ourselves a little bit about what really happened in Mex in Mexico, right? So at least so we can get an idea, just at least a little bit. All right, there's a lot of history in Mexico, from petroleum situations to like for example, from 1521 to fit to 1821, I believe it's in here too. 1521 to 1821, right? People were reporting here in Mexico colonial era. Ranchers lost cattle to tar pits. So they were basically saying it's hazardous, right? But you guys know what tar pits are. It's oil, petroleum. So 1821, 1521 to 1821, okay? This guy's one, you know, so the enemy. Okay, here we go. Now, we understand that. This guy's name is Edward Downing. But here's the, here's the weird part. In 1821, we become independent. And then all of a sudden, the Monroe Doctrine is written in 1823. You guys need to look up this Monroe Doctrine, okay? But it was implemented in 1848, which is when the Mexican secession happened, secession happened right? Then you see a bunch of Mexican wars from independence. from eight, Since they came, we've been fighting war after war after war. Even now, to this day, now we're fighting a drug war. Since 1492, it hasn't happened. And President Monroe, when he first articulated this doctrine, it was in 1823, two years after we became independent from Spain. Then all of a sudden, hey, guys, guess what? The Monroe Doctrine will protect us, okay? It'll protect us. So if in case any invaders from other nations come, then, then we'll help each other. But in the blueprint, it says, in the small print, it says, but if you owe money or you cause havoc and they try to invade here, then we're going to conquer you and control you. Isn't that what they do? Isn't that what the Americas do? What the so-called white man does? Or the people in power? Listen, guys. Us, we are, we are people have been through so much, man. Like in the Americas. The Indian Removal Act of 1838. You know what I'm saying? And then from, as time goes on, now you're dealing with gas baths. From, seven, from 1917 to 1964, with the Bracero Program, that they were using disinfections and fumigations, which was, they was practicing that until 1963. And from 1942 to 1964, it was basically the Bracero program. More than 2 million people were actually like, like short-term labor contract people, right? My, my dad's brother did that. I think, yeah, I think he did. And guess what? They were being sprayed with DDT, DDT. I know, do you so-called Mexicans, like older ones like me? You know what that is. And then watch this, the literacy percentage, it was horrible. In 1910, only 15% of the population were literate. In the 1900, if I read you guys, you guys should pay attention, we still were not allowed to have the Bible. And even if we were, because there was like a few, but they're expensive, who the hell could, he, could read it? Only 95% or 90%, I mean, only 10 or 15% knew how to read. Mexico. Us Mexicans have been through a lot, man. Like, if you think about here, the Mexican reparation from 1929-1936, they got rid of a lot of us. Operation Wetback in 1954. More than a million people being lynched in, 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 uh, in Texas, in Arizona, in, in North Carolina, in Nevada, all of those areas. In New Mexico. So since 1492, up until this day, we have been struggling. We have been struggling. I'm going to show you guys a video. Okay? It runs about four minutes. The unrest was there because of the nature of that economy, of the society of that time. Rural Mexico was poor. Uh, the Hacienda system was a tragedy for Mexico. The haciendas were large estates. Some originated from Spanish land grants, while others were made up of lands the owners had bought or stolen. They were nearly totally self-sufficient enterprises that up until the revolution 
functioned in a semi-feudal system. The haciendas generated much of the wealth of the country, but most of it stayed in the hands of a few. The owner called the Encendado. Sephardic Jews were the Encendados, okay? Get that right. Those are facts, and people that in Mexico know that. And if you're not from Mexico or you don't know the history, guess what? You're going to go around saying that there are people. That's why that gentleman was trying to educate y'all. But it just went over your head. Had nearly total power over the bears, the people who worked the land. Remember everything I've read to you guys, okay? So now we're going to summarize with the video. We now know that certain people are not our people, and guess what they were doing to us the whole time? We read it, now we're going to visualize it. The southern state of Morelos was home to some of the richest haciendas in all of Mexico. And you guys know who that is, all right? I don't even have to say it. You brothers and sisters that are a little bit older that know your history, right? You, there's a gentleman that uh, sent me a message, which you know who I'm talking about, brother. You know your history. You know that for a fact this happened. So all praises to you, bro. You stood your ground. Because guess what? When I, when I don't know a subject, man, I don't talk about it. And if I want to, I'm going to study it before I even open my mouth. Many, Many of them were sugar, sugar plantations, plantations, long known for horrendous conditions. After centuries of abuse, Morelos was ripe for a rebellion. Remember the book said that they, they assigned certain people, like even Africans, like taskmasters to make sure they got their work done. But since on paper it looks nice, but in reality, we always know what it ends up being. They've done studies about people that are in power and people that are sub have to be submissive to them. And guess what? They abuse the power. Yeah, I need to look at that. Andaban los alcapatazes en las calles, que no hubiera ninguno en su casa sentado ni acostado menos y lo vían, vamos para afuera, ni permiso pedían los alcapatazes. A punta de chico, vamos a cargarse la calle, a cortar calle, por 25 centavitos, centavitos, no pesos, como ahora. The pressure makes a wise man mad and gift killer the heart. Ecclesiastes 7 7. Si vemos al porfiriato desde el punto de vista del crecimiento y la afirmación de una economía mexicana. All these guys were not our people. And most of them, if not all of them, were Sephardic Jews. They were mostly Spaniards. You guys think that they were escaping from power. They weren't. You saw them in position of power. And we read the book that says Latinos. These are Latinos. Latinos. That's why they call themselves Latinos. That's why when you say Latinos, they're like, nah, you guys are not Latinos. You guys are Mexican beaners and wetbacks. We're Latinos. That's what they say. <laughs> Si lo vemos desde el punto de vista de la opresión de los indígenas, de los campesinos mexicanos, los trabajadores urbanos, en que esto se basaba, vamos a ver otra, otra visión. Si combinamos las dos visiones, lo que nos va a aparecer en el medio es una gran injusticia. Esto es el porfiriato. Look at that. Our people have been suffering for some time. 
And we got silly dubs that are not saying that the same people that did that to us. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let me see something. I'm looking for something. Mm. Real quick, let me see if I can find it. If not, I'm just going to continue and finish off. Let me see. Quick second. I'm going to show you guys something. The results of those things. If I can find it in time. I might even be able to. Mm, no. All right, let me just finish. I'm just going to read Ciroc, guys, okay? Uh, I'm just going to put this up, and then I'll be in Ciroc, and then I'm going to finish it off. Uh, all right, Ciroc, chapter, chapter 5, verse 9, and it reads, We do not with every wind, and go not into every way, for so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. So if this is happening, then, you know, something's going on. Sin is reviving. And then y'all were just trying to find excuses to say or justify. God knows what it is. Be steadfast in thy understanding and let thy word be the same. The same. We're going to read to verse 15, okay? Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere and with patience give answers. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If, thy, if not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Honor and shame in Honor and shame is in talk, and the tongue of a man in his fall. Be not called a whisperer, lie not in wait, tongue. That's not my intent here. Here it goes. Be not ignorant of anything in great or small matter, meaning what? Don't talk about things you don't know. And if you don't know, don't talk about it. Like it says here, I lay, if not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Sirach 14, okay, verse 11, and it reads, My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself according to thy ability. Do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. Don't go too far out what you're not able to control or handle. Know who you are. Know your assignment. And quite frankly, like I've been taught, shut up and do the work. Why are we reaching? Like, I don't even get into, like, awkward. Like, I don't even get into, like, parables of, the, of Genesis or Revelation. That's not my interest. I want to help our people build themselves up. Defraud not thyself of the good day, and let not the part of the of a good desire overpass thee. All right. So, you brethren, uh, shalom. Love y'all. I hope I hope this was an edifying class. I hope the brethren that technically this I hope this cuts somebody, because then it would hopefully bring them back to the truth. <clears throat> because I'd hate to see some of us who've been talking about it. We're somewhat disappointed that we're seeing things like this happening now. Anyhow, you know me, man. I always pick songs in Spanish to bring up my points. All right? Mostly political. And I think it makes sense with this, okay? So anyways, shalom. And uh, love you guys, man. Lord willing, I'm going to do another class, all right? Here we go. Hold on. Excuse me.
Y eso que una violación es lo podía antimar Con tanto morto el morbo están alimentando Pues no hay paz Son lumbo dio contenido en tiris Para que vivan en la paz Y si algún día cambiará Hay extorsiones, lobo, violaciones y antimar Con tanto morto el morbo están alimentando Pues no hay paz Son lumbo dio contenido en tiris Para que vivan en la paz Y si algún día cambiará Sensacionalismo, amigo eterno de la prensa El mismo que por Juan Luján no sumiso Callado y muestra En el noticiero, en el artículo del diario La vida de una vez de que poco infierno Al vecindario Sirven como fieles, peligreses, son por intereses Mienten todo el día, crían, crean Solo estupideces La historia afirma y diga que siempre negaron información alternativa Que todo pueblo merece A cada instante pareciera su labor Asesinar una memoria colectiva que hace una nación Con una prensa cómplice que juega con humor Desconociendo ese dolor que nos dejó ese dictador Cortina de humo es su mejor función Para apartarte de la fuente harán de todo tu estilo Hoy, como venderte el culo de Sharon Stone Cagándose en tu derecho a la objetiva información El narco, el almirante, el presidente, el congresista Algún ministro, algún ligado de seguro es el patrón De ese periódico morboso y amarillo Que al leerlo dos minutos te vuelve en un show Los medios son culpables, responsables de Toda propia la basura que te ofrece la TV Pues, será mejor que se autoduque Pues me creen porque el comercio de los medios de carcomia hasta la sien Ya, ya, ya Hay violaciones, extracciones, no por tanto y más Por tanto morbo, el morbo están alimentando Pues no hay paz Solo un odio contenido en tiris Para que vivan en la paz Si algún día cambiará Hay extorsiones, violaciones, no por tanto y más Por tanto morbo, el morbo están alimentando Pues no hay paz Solo un odio contenido en tiris Para que vivan en la paz Si algún día cambiará Si algún día cambiará que algún día cambiará, na, 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 na